everybody. I have a cool question I'm going to be journeying into. It's more of an idea. And so let me read the question and then we're going to go from there. Okay, you guys ready for this? Okay. I've been reading Dolores Cannon's Convoluted Universe book series. I'm wondering if you could take a journey into the cerebellum part of the brain. I have a theory that's where the subconscious is. Dolores taps into the universal mind to get answers, and I think the cerebellum is the physical part where wisdom is processed. It's also called the reptilian ancient brain. So I'm going to use this interesting information, and I've not read Dolores Cannon's Convoluted Universe, and I want to just see what we discover, okay? So the cerebellum will explore the concept of a subconscious mind. We'll even explore the concept of a reptilian ancient brain. Okay, this is going to be so interesting. <laughs> All right, I'm going to relax and get tuned in here. So let's take a look at the energy side of the cerebellum. Is it a subconscious mind? And what is its relationship with the reptilian brain? Okay. All I can tell you is what I get. <sighs> It's very energetically tight and it's sticky and there's a greenish sticky goo and it's dry and it's not easy to even cut through or break this energy down. Remember, I'm looking at the cerebellum on the energy side of things. It's like a coating, like a shell in a way. <clears throat> I keep thinking of what is a surreal egg? that is made out of a material that is unbreakable and that this egg has not yet hatched. So even the human mind has not yet hatched. <sighs> What's interesting is there is a professor here and it's a reptilian being who is expressing, um, energetically expressing himself as a professor type persona. Uh, an intelligent well-learned individual in the realm of the mind, but the physical brain. He was talking to me about, you could define it as self-realization, but it was more technical than that. I'm going to just be silent for a moment and just see what happens next, okay? Okay, boy, this it's a really unusual type of communication. It's, it's this fast and I, it's like hard to keep up with. I'll just tell you the first part was that the human is afraid of self-realization. It's, it's, it's beyond that though. The human is afraid of the human's true self. So the human being afraid of the human's true self then is struggling to evolve, okay? Because until the human can embrace the human's true self, we will always remain with, with this unbreakable egg not opening. Us not opening up to our full potential. This reptilian is super clean, cut and dry, very doctor, professional, scientific, um, a learned, studied type energy, okay? And he's talking to me about how, how you would, to, would achieve this. If you were to attempt to achieve this right now in your life, how you would do it. It's, it's hard because you can't conceive of your true self. You can't conceive of what you are once the egg has been hatched. 
And so already you're resisting out of fear, subconscious fear. It's like knowing the future, if you can't even conceive of what the future looks like. It's like trying to process a reality you can't see. How are you supposed to do that? It's a quantum leap. There has to be an event like a quantum leap. He studies the human brain. I'm going to tell you what, this is, this conversation is extremely advanced. <laughs> so all I can do is the best I can do to keep up with his style of communication. I mean, there's words here. I, I don't even know what those words are in English. I don't know the science of it. I don't know. <laughs> so let me just stay with it and see what, what comes next, okay? Okay, he's talking to me about a human being being tortured. They don't know what they are capable of. So at first they're being tortured and it's terrifying. They go through years of being tortured and now they can cope with it. How is it that the human can cope with torture over time but can't cope with it on the immediate day of? What allows the human then to become able to cope with something so terrifying? <clears throat> he wants to see the human evolve. He wants to see the event. He's expressing to me that this will happen in time. The event will happen. It's inevitable. And there will be a breaking of what is this egg in our own mind, the shell. And we will awaken to our true selves, our true human nature. We aren't there yet. We aren't there yet. But it will happen. I mean, he's showing me that he's he has monitored what is un, unimaginable quantities of species. I don't know how old this being is. Um, but it happens with every single one. Every single species this event happens with. And it will happen with us. I ask him if a quantum leap then is like a miracle. What triggers a quantum leap? What triggers a quantum leap in one versus the whole? And will it happen as a whole or one at a time or sporadically? Is a multitude, but not everybody. Okay, it's like talking about DNA and how DNA shifts and changes. You could have family members that are all Caucasian, and suddenly one family member is born with, with brown skin and, and black hair, and the others are pale with blonde hair. How is that possible? How is that possible? It should not be genetically possible, but DNA, DNA information, it can shift to, to express something, a stronger sense of itself is a different identity of itself. It's almost like this always was in the DNA, but what inspired it to, to do it in this way? How come this child wasn't born like all the others? How come this child is so different? What inspired that event to happen when it seemingly like it never should have happened? Like it would have been very difficult for that to be the outcome. This child doesn't even look like it belongs in this family. But yet the DNA matches with the family's DNA. There's major energy shifting going on here. 
particularly around my head and it kind of comes down the sides of my face and then down my neck and then forward in front of my chest like over my heart he's super nice he's not um he likes to study and watch growth and change and transformation he loves this and he is a physical being he likes physical realms he likes watching physical realms and races over time transforming but to participate in the physical aspects of that experience he rejoices in his role he doesn't harm anybody or anything in fact he he's not trying to speed up the process either he's not trying to influence because he would rather watch it as a natural event take place And he's excited for the human race to awaken. There's no defined time when that's going to happen. Ask him what he knows about the subconscious mind. Does the ancient reptilian brain have a subconscious mind too? Hmm. Yeah, boy, this is so complicated. What is the point of having a subconscious mind? It's almost like like you have it because it hasn't merged totally. Like you wouldn't need a subconscious mind if you were fully awakened, if the egg um, were to hatch inside your own physical brain. And when that event happens, it's almost like the subconscious merges with the conscious mind. Like... It's almost like you become whole with all of your inner thoughts, your even your hidden thoughts, with your with your existence, with your identity, with your DNA. Like it all just seems to become, um, like you turn from a human into a sun, <laughs> like you you totally become a like alive. In a weird way, we're like in an incubation state. And he really shows me that there's no need for a subconscious mind once this egg is hatched. Because we are fully enlightened. I guess I'm looking at him and I... I'm asking him if there's anything else he'd like to share with us. He's full of love. And we should be so excited to be a part of this process. It's really special. And he feels like the human race is... I mean, he's showing me what an extraordinary race of beings that we are. And for this quantum leap to happen, for this awakening in our minds to take place, it's, it's something, it's like, there's no words to define it. It would be like the most breathtaking moment and then some, like unfathomable. And he wants to be here to watch it. He wants to be here to see it happen. We should be so proud of the forms that we've chosen. We should be so proud to be here to support the development of this race of beings. I mean, he's really excited about the human race. He's really excited about us. It's almost like he's part of the inspiration of us in a way, but I don't feel like because he he emits this energy like he's watching his children grow up. That's the type of energy that he is emitting. And he's so proud of his children. He's... It's hard to define his age. It's... It doesn't feel like he... he I don't relate to an incarnation cycle with this being. Like, he expresses himself as this. This is his soul's greatest joy. 
And I don't feel like there's any end or beginning to this role. And he is a bringer of inspiration and science into physical creation. It's, it's like this. He doesn't feel like it's been a very long time or he's burnt out in his life. He's, he is at the forefront of the excitement of every moment of his existence. And he's so happy. I ask him what he knows about human suffering. He's talking about, I mean, this is exhausting as we switch topics because we're looking at the brain, the physical brain. Now we're looking at emotions. It's like a different topic is what it feels like. It's like we're sh shifting energetic conversations. He, the reason why it's hard to hear what he has to say about this is because he is not in suffering. He is happy. So, in a way, I'm, I'm showing him human suffering by creating the vibration of that, co that concept. And he's not, he's not taught, he's not echoing back at the same frequency. So I'm going to have to become energetically different to talk to him about this. So I'm going to have to get on his level, which is really bright. I mean, he doesn't go into suffering. He doesn't go into sorrow. He's talking about torture, but he's talking about it on a scientific level of discovery about the human race and about us. So I'm going to touch his heart for a minute. And I'm going to touch his mind. Hmm. He's talking to me in return. It's, it's a vast message. So all I can do is wait right now. It's like a downloading of a vast message. It's like every scale on a reptilian being, every cell in our body is a memory and we carry the memories with us, each and every one of us. He carries even our memories too as we carry his memories. He can't be a human being. He can be what and who and what he is. We chose to be human beings. He's choosing to watch over us, to learn and to grow alongside us as also an overseer and a scientist. I'm going to go step into his shoes. It's not an easy conversation because the way he communicates is not, it's almost not familiar to, to me, the way frequency interacts. He doesn't interact similar to the way 99% of frequency interacts. I get this every now and then where you come across an energetic expression that is an unfamiliar one for me to translate it. 
And it's like trying, it's like a preschooler trying to understand Albert Einstein talking about all these high level, like really complicated equations. And it, it's just, it's not being received. Like I'm not on the same page. I'm not on the same level of, of understanding the scientific communication. And he's not one to alter his stance. So I'm trying from another angle to comprehend him more. Because I'm going to need him to come down to my level. My creative mind level. Which I feel is him stepping up <laughs> to my level. <laughs> But we have to come to a, to a balance with each other. Okay. What he's talking to me is about, it's like, it's like he's telling me what would take me a million years to relay that information back to you. It's like the vastness of time and the understanding of creation, the understanding of our planet, the understanding of our race, the understanding of... And it's so vast and full of so many details that my mind just draws a blank. Like, it doesn't compute to my mind because I need it to be simplified to some specific events or details, something simpler. But perhaps this is the breaking of my own shell. This is the breaking of my own cerebellum egg. Because the reality is I can translate this. I can understand it. When are we going to let go of language? Because re realistically, language is slowing us way down. I have to somehow translate this message into a language for it to be understood by people. And... Sometimes they'll speak in ways that there's no words in English. There's no even emotions in, in the human race to define that. And so there's no way I could even present that understanding. It's like trying to define a color you've never seen before. However, that is the breaking down of this, this egg. Is to become open to how inconceivably aware we are inconceivably capable we are, inconceivably psychically connected to everything in all time, I feel like what he's telling me too is the ascension, you could say, or the awakening of our own human mind is actually we become immortals in a way. We, we have the ability to decide how long of a life we want to live like he He's not going anywhere anytime soon. He loves his life. He doesn't have even another thought in his mind to do anything else. He is so in, just entranced with his life. He's so happy. He's not curious about anything other than what he loves doing. And that is the true evolution of the human race. Is to become what is like an immortal race of beings of pure enlightenment and awareness, like God consciousness incarnate. That is actually the future of our human race. And he sees the potential in us to access that. So us flirting with the subconscious is us holding onto the archaic version of our own biological we create setup and mind like us exploring the suffering of the human race is going in reverse to the direction of the awakening of the human race like it's all done to truly hatch this egg we have to acknowledge what we are <laughs> and we have to do it together because this message is meant to be translated because it can be translated and it is already understood and known by all of us. And he's speaking to me with respect of my intelligence. I am speaking to myself and you all out of, in a way, disrespect of my intelligence. But that's the difference between conceiving of what is beyond your own mind 
that is inconceivable. <laughs> but here he has created a, an example through me to help us all understand what he's talking about. He is in reverence of us. He even bows and he is in, in just gratitude to be visited today. To be someone that could be a representative of a beautiful reptilian being to talk to us about our beautiful race of beings, the human race, and our connection with his race of beings, and our connection with our capabilities, our real true capabilities. He shows me that eventually we will admit it somehow inside ourselves. Is it going to be admitted inside of our subconscious or is it going to be a conscious thing? Is it going to be a collective thing? The quantum leap is when we all stop fighting within ourselves, which creates fighting with others that isn't necessary, which creates a working together and a true, true love and caring and consideration, support of one another, which we all know is possible because it's part of our, we are bred to, to evolve into enlightened, loving beings, unconditionally loving, enlightened beings. That's why we all have this innate seed planted of the way the world can be. And we all believe the world can be like that. And the world is going to become like that. We are still struggling with our fear of the awakening. And this is part of our evolution. He just bows again and he just sends all of his love to us. And he, it's like, please understand why I will not go down to your level. Like he, he will speak intelligently about things but he won't choose to feel suffering with us he won't even choose to feel sorry for us because we shouldn't choose to feel that for ourselves we should get over it and then acknowledge our capacity which is breaking down opening up our true selves which truly becomes an immortal life <laughs> we we go from being physical humans kind of a I mean, it literally looks like more of an animalistic incarnation into being glowing beings of sunlight. That's literally what it looks like, the difference. Which is interesting because we're talking about a physical brain. So when the physical brain opens itself up, it opens up to light and somehow we transcend into light beings. That's literally what that looks like in this vision. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you all for sticking with it here with me. I wasn't going to give up on this. I really wanted to truly understand what he was saying. And I feel it's actually been an extraordinary journey with him. And I'm just so happy that I received this question and I'm able to explore it with all of you guys. Thank you for joining me in this experience. It was cool. Okay. Hmm. All right. For those of you um, interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at abbynormalswisdomquest. And I have two other YouTube channels if you're interested in checking them out. One is Abby Psychic Services and the other is Zodiac Energy Readings. Okay, have a great day. Thank you all again for watching.